Hey everyone, my name is Frontier Setter. Now today is going to be kind of a little departure from my regular tactical content. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about some anime-inspired mobile games I've been currently playing on my phone. So if this isn't your cup of matcha tea, feel free to tune out. But for those of you who want to stay, keep it locked and let's get to it. So I am currently using the Razer phone right now. Uh, this is my daily driver, and I like it because it has a long battery life. It has a huge 120 hertz refresh rate screen. It also has 8 gigs of RAM, removable SD storage, and also these stereo front-facing speakers. So we all know that mobile games are pretty much just for pleb normies, and it's a good way for companies to make a quick cash grab. If you do find quality mobile games, it's nice to have them when you're on the go and stuff like that. There's just something nice about having the games with you all the time. So I've had to scour the depths of the Google Play Store to find some decent games. I've played pretty much every anime inspired video game on the Google Play Store, and I know personal tastes and preferences will differ, so this list might not apply to you, but I'm sure you'll want to hear more if you're still watching this video, so let's get to it. Here are my top three in no particular order. So this is Goddess Kiss. It is a mecha-type gacha game. There's a bunch of characters and mechs to unlock, and there's a bunch of costumes that you can actually buy with premium currency or eventually just unlock over time. And these costumes actually do affect stats, as you can see here. And there actually is a good amount of strategy on the play field. The game itself is like a 5v5 game on a 3x3 grid. You set up your own mecha team, each character having their own special abilities. Now, it seems pretty simple at first, but when you start competing against other players, you have to know like hard counters and different movesets for each of these characters here. As I said before, Goddess Kiss does have a premium currency, but if you just do daily missions, you can just accrue them over time. It's fun, relaxing, there's plenty of stuff to unlock and to collect if you're into that kind of thing. And uh, my waifu is Petra over here, as you can see, because she is the most tactical. And now here we have Honkai Impact 3rd. This is a hack and slash game, similar in the vein to like Bayonetta and DMC. There's a good amount of characters to choose from, and their costumes actually affect their abilities and combat style. The combat is extremely fluid, and there's a parry and dodge system. As you can see here, the animations are superb. This is definitely like a console quality game. There's a bunch of weapons and items to unlock, and I'm glad that this finally got released in North America. And since it's been out in other countries, they're actually just pulling those events to us now, so there's always something to do to keep you busy. It's extremely polished. In the settings, you can actually downplay the resolution, frame rate, texture quality, and this is something that you don't see in other mobile games, and this is great for like lower end devices. I love the small details. When you're on the bridge, there's actually a small parallax effect that happens, you can see in the background here. The sky changes depending on what time you're playing the game. It's been a while since I've been really impressed by a mobile game, so if you're looking for a solid hack and slash, this is like definitely the way to go. Also, May is Bay. Wait a second, what's this? HK. So here we have Master of Eternity, Moe, as Travis Touchdown would like to call it. It's another mecha-themed game, except this one is 3D and it plays more like a traditional turn-based tactical RPG. This one is a relatively new game that Nexon put out a few months ago. It's similar to Goddess Kiss, obviously, uh, as there is a lot of characters to unlock and there's different mechs to, uh, to use as well. But this is where it kind of gets a little pervy. But that's why you came here, isn't it? There is this VR mode that brings shame and dishonor to your family. But hentai aside, this is actually a pretty solid game once you get past all that. Each mission has a storyline behind it, and even though all the missions are practically the same, which is kill everything, they do have specific objectives that kind of vary up the gameplay. Even though I've only spent a few months on it, I can already tell it's very polished and has a lot of potential and content to grow. I'm still in the middle of the campaign, but I really want to unlock Kana, because she seems like the best waifu so far. Now I know there's like a bunch of mobile games out there, and I've played a majority of them, but these are the ones that have held my attention for the longest time. And I'm actually currently waiting for Girls Frontline to be released in North America. This one seems really promising because it has a huge focus on modern day guns. Even though the USP, MP5, and 416 got relegated to lulling status, what the fuck? At least we have the UMP and G36 though. You only buy HK. Boogie, 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 boogie. 
So yeah, I guess there you have it. If you have any suggestions on games that I would like to play, please leave them down in the comments below. And if you'd like to see an actual review on any of these, please let me know also in the comments below. I don't usually do this kind of content, but it was fun putting this footage together. So if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel, keep it locked, and as usual, always remember to stay tactically kawaii. Take me to sun.